After obtaining an MBA, she worked on Wall Street for nearly 15 years. Although a widow, her family moved 11 times in 23 years of marriage. Mmm, that makes me groan just to think about it. No? Good. Dr. Woody currently serves as a DTS professor on both the Dallas and Houston campuses and looks forward to joining the Washington, D.C. team in August. The move is this Friday. Next Friday, the 29th. 29th. <laughs> so we do need to pray about that. As a therapist, her focus is on marriage and family counseling. However, her passion is working with at-risk teens and women who are rebuilding their lives from domestic violence, the sex trafficking industry, or incarceration. In her spare time, she enjoys cheering for her alma maters, UCLA and USC, along with spas, movies, vacations, with her three adult children, and spoiling her two furry grand puppies. Yeah. That's great. Join with me in welcoming Dr. Michelle Woody to our podium today. Well, good morning. Hope you're doing well. Well, two more weeks of the summer session. How do you feel? It's a counseling question. How do you feel? <laughs> Trust me, I've been where you are. I know how you feel. <laughs> you're going to make it. You're going to get through it. I promise you, you will. Congratulations if you're graduating this summer. Woohoo! Summer grads, where are you? All right, just one, two, come on. Everybody else died, where are you? <laughs> Congratulations on that accomplishment. Everybody else, keep on swimming. Swim into the fall and beyond. You will finish, I promise you. You will get through the semester and the year, and you will also graduate. Um, as Dr. Allen said, I too am in transition. I'm grateful that I don't look how I feel right now, okay? How many things do I have to take care of at home? But all I can tell you is God is good. It just looks like a bad storm coming up and it kind of blows over and then whew, it's over. So next Friday, I will be living in Washington, D.C. with my family. So. We are moving, we're grateful, we're excited. Wanted to um, just add one more word about my daughter, Kelsey. Kelsey is the baby of my three, and not even I can believe she's a junior in college, hard to believe, but Kelsey has been called to do films. She wants to be a filmmaker of Christian films. She said she's just sick and tired of what we're seeing on the screen. She wants to help girls to have higher self-esteem. And I'm thinking, okay, you do that. She tells me what she studies. I don't have a clue of what any of it is. All you guys in the back do, I don't know any of it, but I'm grateful that she's doing it and it will be good for her. My message today is a very simple one. Um, how to pursue your mission field. How can you pursue your mission field? And you might be thinking, well, what do you mean, Dr. Woody? Am I going to a far off land? Am I leaving where I am right now? What do we mean by pursuing the mission field? Well, let me ask you a question. How do you know what to do with all of the knowledge that you're getting here at DTS? Who has trained you how do you know what you're doing? And better else, how have you even thought of, have you ever thought about what you're going to do with the knowledge that God has given you? My assumption is you came here because you wanted to be equipped to do ministry. And that not only do you want to be equipped to do ministry, but you want to do ministry according to God's way for you, his goal for you, his will for your life. Now, a lot of us here, we're type A. Speak for myself, I'm a type A person, okay? So not only did I want to come to DTS, and I believe based on my background, the things that I've done in my life, the teaching that I've done in, with the Bible, that 
I kind of had an idea that I knew the Bible. That's until I got to DTS and learned, well, I didn't know quite as much about the Bible as I thought I did. But thank God, after eight BE classes, I know a little bit more <laughs> than I did before about the Bible. But seriously, have you ever thought about, Lord, what is it that I should be doing with my life? So I have a scripture that I wanted us to look at, just to look at just one of God's primary people, leaders in the Bible and his call. I'm reading from Genesis 12, verses 1 through 4a. Now the Lord said to Abram, go forth from your country and from your relatives. Do I need to read that again? Mm -hmm. From your relatives and from your father's house, do I need to say that again? From your father's house to the land which I will show you. And I will make you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great. And so you shall be a blessing and I will bless those who bless you. And the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. So Abram went forth as the Lord had spoken to him. Now, I just want us, it's summertime, we can be a little bit more relaxed than we are during the year. I just want you to put yourself in the text. Who do you think Abram, and as we know him, Abraham really was at the time that God tapped him on the shoulder and said, I just want you to go that away. I'm going to catch up with you, but just kind of, just well, Lord, where do you want me to go? Okay, you're just going to go right up there, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you where to go. Abraham was a rock star. Abraham was wealthy. He would have had a great house in Highland Park, in Beverly Hills, in Fairfax County, Virginia, where I'm moving. I'm like, why do I have to move to this affluent county? I don't have enough money to live here. This affluent county. This is who Abraham was. But in verse 4, we see that all Abraham did was prepare to move. We don't see that he said, but you know, Lord, I'm building Sari her dream house, and we have to stay behind. Um, we'd, like to, we'd like to go where you're telling us to go, but she wants to live with her relatives, and they want to grow, and you know, we don't have kids now, but okay, we want to just kind of settle, and we want to be comfortable. And oh, by the way, I'm an elder in my church. So, you know, I, I, I like your offer, but no thanks. I, I really don't want to go there. I don't see where Abraham said any of those things. Do you? Doesn't appear that he had any type of hesitation. He just went where God told him to go. What we learn is God will reveal to you even you as a DTS student right now, what the next steps in your life will be once you are willing to go in faith where he's telling you to go. What's our problem? Most of us aren't willing to go. We like our comfort. We are creatures of habit. We want to be where we want to be. We know what we want it to do. Even me as a counselor coming here, I already knew that I was going to be doing counseling. I wanted to do counseling. How did I know? I was called for that. Dr. Joe, we don't have time for me to explain the call, but I understood that I was called to do that. But when I came here, I already knew, okay, I'm going to go into private practice. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. That's until I had my practicum. And in my practicum, I had to go to a home for boys who at risk adolescents who had drug addiction challenges, I fell in love with those boys. And then I wanted to help their families. And it seemed really great until I realized how complex life was for the boys and their families. And that there were things at home that needed to be addressed. Okay, but I don't know anything about that. And I'm wondering as an African American, how did I not understand a lot of the things that were, had, what, that were affecting them and impacting them in schools, in the community, in the things that they were doing? Why are they on drugs? Why are they doing the things that they're doing? It's complicated. We don't have time to talk about that today, but it was very complicated. But I know once I got involved that it was God who said, okay, 
you're it. You're on the team. I need you to work in this environment. So that's what I did. That's what I did. For you, I think there are three things that I want to share with you that you have to do if you're going to pursue your mission field. Number one, you have to pray without ceasing. You have to pray without ceasing. One of my mentors, when I first started here, DTS said, you've been given an opportunity to gain insight into God and also to work with other Christians who will be your your friends and your colleagues, wherever they're going to be in the world, while you're here at DTS, take advantage of those relationships. Funny, it didn't feel like it in the middle of theology classes. It didn't feel like it at three in the morning when I was doing my reading, but it has proved to be right. You have to take advantage of the opportunities that you have. If you're new to DTS and you're just starting, Start praying now. Lord, what would you have me to do? What would you have me to get involved with? When you pray, how do we pray? Are we like the culture? Do we just want to pray and have it be a microwave experience? I put the food in, and in 30 seconds, I want it out, and God, where's that answer? And I need it because I need it quickly, and I'm trying to text. If you would just give me the answer, I can get it and move on. Is that how we do it? Sure, that's how we do it. We are binge watch Netflix prayers, okay? We want to get the new season going. We want to watch the whole thing and get to the end so God can just tell us, okay, I started in DTS this year, but just get me to the end. What's the finish line? What's the bottom line, God? Where are you taking me? That's not the way it works. You have to go through the process. Secondly, you have to plan. We all know Jeremiah 29. We have to plan, but what I'd advise you to do is to hold on to your plan loosely. Hold on to your plan loosely. You know what your gifts are. You know what your interest is. You know what you, where you're headed, but are you giving God an opportunity to transform all that you're gaining here, put that into his package, and then let you go forth according to his will and not yours? The third, and this is the most unpopular, you got to be patient. Amen. I know. Not a strong suit for most of us. We're just ready to go, and we just want to do what God's telling us to do. But you have to be patient. Why do you have to be patient? Because you have to wait on God's timing. It's God's timing that you have to make sure that you are waiting on, because who's in control of our lives? We think us, but it's all about God. That's what we have to do. So in the midst of you being here, I want you to learn how to be comfortable in the midst of feeling uncomfortable. Learn to be comfortable in the midst of feeling uncomfortable. It is not comfortable being here, not knowing where I'm going to go, who I'm going to live with, who I'm going to marry, how much money will I have, what city, what state. My family wants me to do this one thing, but I really want to do something else. Get comfortable waiting on the Lord. And while you do that, okay, we're in the Bible here every single day. You're in chapel. You have all these opportunities. Hold on to some scriptures. Like trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. You got to be like me. I wear Philippians 4.13 on my wrist every day to remind myself that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Go to the source of your hope so that you have strength. And above all, you got to know that whether or not life ends up the way you expect it, that's not important. What's important is, am I living my life according to God and to his obedience? Am I following the Lord? Do I have humility? A lot of times we say a lot of things about T.H. Emmers here, not going to go into it, what we say about the THMers once they leave, but we all know, and it's not just the THMers, I love you, not just you, but what I'm saying is we have the knowledge. Most of us, we're already smart. That's why we're here. That's why you're here. We're excited about that. The professors, the staff, the administrators, here. we're excited that you're here. 
but we also want you to go forth like the history of all the people who've come before us at Dallas Seminary. We have, to, we have an obligation. We have a responsibility. Life is not about us. It's all about him. So as you think about your mission field, as you think about where you're going to plant you, know that it has to be where God wants you and not where you yourself want to be. Gain the opportunity or, or have that opportunity in your mind already. Make up your mind that you're going to let God lead you and not yourself. So I have a short video from my mission trip because that's another thing I needed you to know. The two big things that occurred in my life this year, number one, going on a mission trip to Eldoret, Kenya, and number two, being asked to go to our Washington, D.C. campus. Neither one of those opportunities were things that I pursued, asked for, and barely had time to pray for because it happened that fast. It was just, you're going to do this now. And so my approach in life has always been as an adult, Lord, here I am, send me. Go where God is sending you. I want you to know I've enjoyed our time. I know I'm a little bit over today, but even in the the, the amazing thing that God did on this mission trip. I thought I was going to lead a Christian leadership conference for a former professor here who could not go. But instead, I did that along with uh, my son and uh, Kevin Ruff, who also was a DTS or is a DTS grad who came with me. But I had to do exactly what I do here in the United States go to encourage women, go to help them understand the things that were going on in their own school districts, help them to understand how to help their children and their families as wives, as, as women of God, and how to support themselves and each other. And my son was able to help the women who make jewelry and all sorts of things to learn how to put their products out on the Internet to sell them. I had no idea that all of this would take place once we went there. So even when things don't always on the surface make sense to you, just know that God's sovereign. He's in control. He's gone ahead of you. He's behind you. He's available to you if you just take a moment to pray. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you, Lord, just for the opportunity to be here today. I want to pray for all of those students, uh, those who will be leaving now to go forth to do the work that you've called them to do, and those who will be returning in the fall to continue their studies. Lord, I pray that you would give everyone the provisions they need, uh, give them the health that they need. Help all of us, Lord, including myself, to take the time to pray, to be still and know that you're God, to know that all the answers are going to come from you and not from us. Help us not to be afraid. Help us not to be in doubt, to live in doubt. Help us to know that you are the ultimate provider and that you will help us. We love you, Lord. We honor you. We pray that you would be with us for the remainder of the day. In Jesus' name, amen.